Hi, my name is Catherine Tatarniak. And I would like to present to you our paper on first year engineering design, course design, projects, challenges, and outcomes. I'm going to look at an introduction to the course and the vision of the course, the course design, the structuring of the course, the design projects that were included as part of the course, and some of the results and statistics. Engineering Design 1 is a first year engineering course at Thompson Rivers University. The course supports accreditation of the software engineering degree program through the Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board. This accreditation is critical to engineering degree programs in Canada because it allows programs, graduates of programs to obtain their professional engineering license. In addition to the software engineering degree program, Thompson Rivers University also offers a first year transfer program where students can complete their first year of engineering studies and transfer to a different university in British Columbia. The course fulfills the following required graduate attributes. These are attributes of the Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board. The use of engineering tools, individual and teamwork, communication between team members, professionalism, the impact of engineering on society and the environment, and economics and project management. The vision of the course was to provide not only a strong theoretical foundation, but also significant practical experiences. The objectives were to align with the Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board's graduate attribute definition of design. And the course provides an excellent student learning experience. It lays a foundation for successful and ethical professional practice and paves the way for the students to become licensed professional engineers in Canada. It also builds the student knowledge base necessary for progressing to more advanced engineering design. So as I mentioned, there are two cohorts of first year students at Thompson Rivers University in engineering. Each cohort has approximately 30 to 35 students. The first year courses in engineering at TRU consist of 36 credit units. The three main courses in the curriculum in software engineering that focused on introducing students to engineering design are engineering design one, two, and three. Consultation was completed with various stakeholders prior to developing the course. This included departmental level committees and meetings, such as the Curriculum and Quality Assurance Committee and the Engineering Design Committee. Meetings were also attended at the institutional level during the development of the course, and we leveraged the TRU experience of teaching engineering courses since the engineering transfer program has been offered for several decades already. We also leveraged the engineering student transfer student experience. So we did this by interviewing and speaking to engineering transfer students on their experience with their current design course, as well as their other courses. The objectives and expected outcomes of the course were to gain a better understanding or an understanding of the engineering profession and the role and responsibilities of a professional engineer in a broader context. For students to become familiar with the engineering design process, which includes learning to meet the desired re needs, requirements, needs and requirements within realistic constraints of product development with a focus on environmental, social, ethical and safety regulations. Students also learn to articulate engineering problems and translate them into a structured design to reflect the product requirements. They apply iterative formal decision making methods to assist in choosing between alternative conceptual designs and they acquire basic 2D and 3D sketching skills using engineering CAD tools. They also experience developing virtual and physical prototypes based on an engineering design using various engineering tools and learn to work collaboratively in teams and communicate effectively using oral written and graphical forms. So a typical week of engineering design one consists of three hours of lectures and two hours of laboratory work. The lectures included 
presentations by course instructors, educational videos, group activities, and four or five guest lectures throughout the year that are approximately 20 minutes long from professional engineers in industry. There's also the laboratory every week, which consists of SOLIDWORKS CAD labs, and there's approximately nine or 10 of these each semester. Homeworks and quizzes include a combination of multiple choice, short answer, and scenario-based questions that prepare the students for midterms and exams, final exams. And each laboratory report includes two or three small CAD programs. Uh, the midterm and final exam are also included in the assessment. The lecture topics are divided into four main categories. The first part of the course introduces students to engineering, the professional engineering licensing, professional ethics, and engineering societies. Then we delve into engineering design. We look at the definition of design, the needs and information, as well as customer requirements. Then we go deeper into design, looking at specifications, conceptual design, evaluating alternatives, selecting cri selection criteria, and introduction to computer-aided design. And then finally, we look at more advanced parts of design, such as finite element analysis and material selection, as well as cost analysis. In the lab talk topics, we create 3D parts to look at 2D engineering drawings and models, then go on to do assembly and animation from exploded and collapsed view, and then finally virtual prototyping. We also do some 3D sketching, weldments, material selection, and then finally some stress and strain analysis. Then the last few weeks of the lab is spent working on project three. So we have three projects and one report as part of this course. The report includes a question on why students want to become an engineer, a case study which includes an ethical problem, and an interview with a professional engineer. Project one includes building a physical prototype. In our first run of the course, this was the design of a portable ramp for a wheelchair. Project two includes a virtual prototype, computer-aided design of a multi-purpose furniture item. Then project three is virtual to physical prototyping, the design and build of a cardboard walker for children with cerebral palsy. The course evaluation, so the quiz, there are two quizzes and they are worth a total of 2%. There's one report worth 2%, homework, which has, which has of which there are three of them at a total of 6%, laboratories, nine of them at 15%, and three projects totaling 25% of the final course grade, a midterm worth 20%, and a final exam worth 30%. Prototyping um, was used as a tool to enable students to understand the design process. Students went from CAD prototyping to physical prototyping, and they created a fully functional physical prototype. They also created in their CAD drawing software a video of exploded and collapsed view of their prototype. Then they developed a technical report which compiled the design process and the final outcome. They did a PowerPoint presentation. They completed a poster. They also completed a group peer review evaluation of the other group members in their design teams. And they compiled all of this into one final report package. Course learning outcomes as stated earlier on in this presentation, each aligned with multiple graduate attribute indicators. For accreditation, results and statistics were provided to the Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board. This included samples of course work, so um, multiple samples of each item that 
met one of the graduate attribute indicators. self reflection reports, which were reports completed by the instructors. So the instructors reflected on how the course went, how well they met the learning outcomes or the graduate attributes, um, and how what they felt they could change in the course to improve how it is designed and how it met the graduate attributes. And this leads to continued course improvement year over year as these self-reflection reports are done on an annual basis. One of the goals of the project, design projects, were, was to understand the design process through physical and computer-aided prototyping. And this was done successfully as shown in this image, which is the prototype, the virtual prototype of the multi-purpose furniture item, which is either a chair or a table. Student evaluations were completed anonymously at the end of the course. So one of the first question was, this course was a valuable learning experience for me. 95% of students agreed with this. The course challenged me to do my best work. 95% agreed, percent of students agreed or strongly agreed. I think the course content reflected the learning outcomes as stated in the course outline. Uh, again, 95% either agreed or strongly agreed. The course experience increased my appreciation for the subject matter. 85% of students agreed or strongly agreed. Student recommendations were to keep SOLIDWORKS as part of the course. The students enjoyed this part, although they found it challenging. They found it also rewarding to be able to see the fruits of their labor. They wanted to include more details in the project instructions. And so this has been included in the previous deliveries of this course. Students also suggested having more frequent regular meetings between instructors and students to help with the design process and help students to stay on track. In conclusion, the course design was guided by teaching content, stakeholders, and the Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board. Engineering design projects are a fundamental part of this course. Most students were satisfied with their experience. Several essential engineering skills were introduced that lay the foundation for more advanced engineering courses and their professional career. Thank you so much for your attention.